Hey everybody, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. I'm Lauren and today we are going to be flipping this beautiful mid-century modern furniture set. I was up early one Sunday morning and I came across this set plus the long dresser that goes along with it and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I messaged them. It was listed for 500 and I got them down to 450. So Nima and I took a little trek about 40 minutes away to grab this set. Now you're wondering why in the world did you pay that much? You're flipping furniture for a profit. Well, this set is a little bit different because we are actually going to be keeping it for our own home, which I am so excited about because we basically never do that. That is why our house has literally no furniture. So this is going to be something that um, is going to stick with us for a really long time. So I was totally okay with paying $450 for a really nice quality piece of, or pieces of furniture. We were doing a little searching around the furniture to figure out what uh, brand it was. And the previous owners actually pointed out this sticker and it is actually a part of the Red Lion Table Company uh, furniture line. And so we did a little bit of research on this set and it retails or goes for nowadays for anywhere from like 800 to 1200 dollars uh, so that's pretty lofty um, but that means that even though we're keeping it now down the road in the future it could continue to rise in price so if we ever get sick of it we could totally sell it for a pretty decent profit. I am going to start, of course, by removing the hardware, which something that I am so stoked about this set is that there were no missing hardware pieces, which actually with mid-century modern furniture is kind of rare, I feel like. There's always something wrong with the hardware, but not on this set, which is really great because it's super unique. Okay, so this has multiple parts to it, looks like. I guess that just kind of pops right off. Okay, sweet. I've never had this type of hardware before, but I think that if I clean this up with some barkeeper's friend in between coats, um, I think it will really shine up and maybe become that brass color again. I'm gonna be putting it all in this box since it's kind of oversized hardware, um, but I don't wanna lose it. I'm gonna put it in this box so I can keep it all in one spot. So I am definitely gonna be taking the time to clean on the insides of the dresser as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start stacking the drawers over here so that everything can, get, can be cleaned properly. All right, now that we've got all the hardware removed, we are ready to clean. All right, we are gonna be cleaning with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. And this is a dissolvable substance um, that I just drop inside of my spray bottle full of water. It disintegrates and it becomes a liquid cleaner. So all I do is spray it right directly onto my surface so that I can wipe it down, get all that grease, grime, and oils off of the surface so that it's nice and clean. So all four pieces actually came with glass that go on top. We haven't 100% decided if we're gonna leave the glass. I think for sure on the nightstands it will be beneficial, um, but on this tall dresser here that's going in our room, eh, I'm kind of unsure. Am I going to paint this set? And the answer is yes. <laughs> 
found this in one of the drawers. But anyway, yes, the answer is yes. I am gonna be painting parts of these. And there are a couple of reasons. One, because I paint furniture, it's what I do. Two, because this is for us and that is the look that I want. And three, there is some significant damage on both corners of the tall boy as well as a little bit on like the top and the sides as well where it's just not repairable from my my personal knowledge like i know someone else could do it but from what i do it's not repairable to um like fix any of the veneer that's missing and things like that so we are going to be painting but first we need to go ahead and fix those damages all right so we are going to fix that with bondo and bondo is a great substitute for wood filler i'd say that like 80 percent of the time i go for bondo because it's just going to be so much more durable it's going to be so much it's going to dry like a harden um, a lot harder than maybe your typical wood filler would um, they also do have like bondo wood filler which is the same exact thing it's just like a different color so it is a two-part epoxy filler um, typically used with cars actually and so what i like to do is just have a piece of cardboard um, that I can just dispose of once I'm finished. And then I will take a paint stir stick and I'll grab out some of the Bondo. And I like to do it in small batches. Small is subjective, but I don't know, like that. And then I will grab the cream hardener, which comes in a little tube with the Bondo and I will squirt that right onto, you know what, actually before I do that, I think I need to make a little wall for my Bondo on the corners to make it look more like a corner than it does currently, because actually a puppy chewed the corners, so they're kind of curved now. So just a little trick is to take some painter's tape and you might need to do two applications of Bondo um, and that's totally okay to get the right shape. But basically I don't want any down below this line so I'm going to just tape that right here so that I can get this shape here down at the bottom. And then I'm also gonna just put this one over here as well and that will just help the Bondo from like dripping down or falling off. This will just give it that baseline to kind of sit on. And then we'll also go back and sand it to where it makes that corner shape. So now we can go ahead and mix up the Bondo with the cream hardener. And I just wanna make it one consistent color. So just stir that together. And then of course you want to work before it uh, hardens before you put it on there. So you kind of want to work a little bit quick. We've got that nice light blue color now. So we'll go ahead and apply this on all of the areas that need some Bondo. Okay, so that Bondo has to harden. So in the meantime, I am going to start working on the drawers. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be painting some of the drawers and then I'm gonna be staining some of the drawers. I did put a bit of Bondo on one of the drawers, but once I prime them, it'll really be able, I'll really be able to tell a, a lot better if it needs to have any more Bondo, um, if there's any like little dings or something that I can't quite see with this wood tone. So I'm going to work on the drawers. All right, let's be honest. This color of stain is just not my favorite and it's for me. So 
I am going to be changing the color of the stain that these drawers are, but still keeping them the raw wood because I really do want to incorporate some wood into these pieces. Now I'm thinking, like I said, of painting these three drawers. So I'm gonna focus on the six other drawers. And one of the easiest ways that I have found, especially as of late, to strip the any type of wood finish off of the piece, if you're trying to go all the way to raw wood, or if you've got a failing finish, is to use a carbide scraper. This is just going to really help you get through that first layer of finish, and then you can grab your sander and sand off the rest and it's not going to take nearly as long. I did the first little session um, with my carbide scraper to get that finish off. I'm going to kind of clean up the shavings, but then I'm also gonna use my surf prep sander with a 120 grit to remove the remainder of that finish and that color and also just smooth out this wood. And I am also, I have got it connected to my um, shop vac here but I'm gonna detach it so that I can also just clean up all this stuff. That's one thing I really love about having this vacuum dust extractor. Not only does it extract the dust, but it can also kind of clean up as you go along. Okay, so the six drawers that are gonna be raw wood are completely sanded down and those will be ready for stain when I am ready to apply that. But I wanna get a little bit farther in my process so that I can kind of do that in between like when something else is drying. So with that being said, I am going to work on scuff sanding the parts that I'm gonna paint and then um, sanding back all that Bondo and making everything nice and smooth again. Um, the reason I wanna scuff sand is just so that paint can adhere. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be doing some primer um, just for max adherence and so that if I do bust through some of the finish, which I'm assuming I will with the Bondo, then um, I can cover that and block that stain with the Boss Primer by Dixie Belle. is now completely scuff sanded. The Bondo is smoothed out. So I'm gonna wipe this dust back and we are going to prep for primer. So part of prepping for primer is to take the legs off here. Um, so the whole entire base should come off from what I um, could see underneath here. And I am gonna be sanding it completely down and staining it the same color as these um, drawers will be. So I'm just gonna completely take it off while I'm priming and painting. That way I don't even have to worry about taping it off. Uh, but there are these just little screw holes here. And so, like I said, I'm pretty sure that should just pop right off. I feel like this always happens to me. I think it's gonna be so much easier than it actually is. 
There are little spots in the inside where the legs are like, I'm assuming screwed in as well. And these pieces of wood are covering it. I cannot get them out at all. Um, so uh, I'm just going to have to tape off the base and then sand it down. I think I'll sand it actually back to sanding a little bit. Um, I'll sand it down and then I'll tape it off so that I can prime. it down I don't want to get primer on them so I am going to use some painters tape to tape off the legs I was hoping that I wouldn't have to do this but it is what it is gotta do what you gotta do The legs are taped off. I have to fix that veneer that I broke off and then we'll be able to prime. Okay, now that we've got those bases sanded down, everything's fixed up, it's time to prime officially. And we are gonna be using Dixie Bell's Boss in the color gray. This is a um, primer that blocks odors, stains, and stops bleed through. So that's why it's called Boss. It's like a little acronym for you. Um, but I'm just going to spray or um, strain this through into my sprayer cup. Um, I'm gonna spray these because I just really want a crisp finish and a sprayer is the way that you can do that best. So the reason I wanna strain it is so that no chunks get stuck in my spray gun. And I'm just gonna spray or uh, pour about half in there for now. I can always add more later. Hopefully that will be plenty. Let's get her connected and spray some primer. So I'm gonna be using this Wagner Flexio. I believe this one is the 3000. Um, I'll link a similar model down below so that you can also invest yourself in a Wagner because it really is the key to getting a smooth finish. If you're interested in taking your flips to the next level, this is a great way to do that. Um, I think it's the most beginner friendly sprayer, so definitely something for you to check out. You always wanna wear a respirator when you're spraying, even if your paint has like no toxins and stuff like that, because you're really just protecting your lungs from breathing in the tiny, tiny particles of the paint that are in the air. So I'm gonna turn this on and we're gonna do some test sprays. I've got my cardboard box out there so that I can test my spray pattern, which is super important um, to make sure that you've got a good flow. This is a little bit of a thicker paint, so I'm gonna turn it up just a tad bit. So when you get this buttering, you know that your paint is too thick or that you don't have quite enough pressure. When it starts to skip like this in your spray pattern, you need to probably thin it out just a tad bit.
first coat of primer, check. I ended up doing a second coat of primer, so now it's time to paint. The color I'm gonna be using is Cactus from the Silk Mineral Paint line of Dixie Belle. I love the Silk line because it is an all-in-one paint, which means it's got that bonding primer inside of it as well as the top coat. So as long as you do two coats of this, it acts as if I put a top coat on it. Sometimes you may wanna do an additional top coat if you've got a place with high traffic and I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna do that, but we'll kinda of just see um, what I decide once I get the two coats on. Um, I chose this color because the color we're kind of going with in our bedroom is green and our our bedspread is like a sage light sage green and the sheets kind of have this color in them and so I thought it was a really good complement um, to the sheets and I'll also bring it in in some other ways as well. So we're gonna filter it through my strainer and again I do this so that no chunks get in here and then clog up the straw when it is filtering through my spray gun. Okay I am going to ch check my spray pattern again even though I just sprayed the primer um, it is a completely different product it is a completely different consistency and also I cleaned out my spray gun before I use the primer I do have multiple um, of these spray gun attachments nozzles um, I'll link those down below because it's really nice to have like a couple on hand so that you don't necessarily have to clean it out immediately, um, but both of mine were filled up, so I did have to clean out one of them. Um, I have about four or five of these on hand so that I can kind of use, I keep one for top coats only, so it only kind of gets the clear through it. And then my other ones, I kind of rotate between primers and paints and things like that. Looking really good. Time to spray the big guy here. That is it for the first coat. It's already drying on some of them and it's looking amazing, drying nice and smooth. So once that dries, we'll come back for coat number two. The first coat is dry. So I am just taking a fine um, sandpaper and sanding it back just to smooth it out a little bit. And then we'll do coat number two. Second coat is on, it's looking really, really awesome. So that's just really gotta dry. And next up, we're going to take the tape off and we're gonna stain the base as well as the drawers. 
Before we get to the stain, we are gonna tackle some hardware first. So I've got my gold gilding wax, and this is going to help bring these pieces of hardware back to life a little bit. Um, they're just looking a little bit dull, and I wanted to shine them up and make them brass again, uh, but the one thing is that these portions of the hardware aren't solid brass, so they won't all look the same um, if I were to clean them up with the barkeeper's friend. So I just decided I'm gonna do some gold gilding wax um, which will give me a nice, subtle gold look on these pieces of hardware. Um, and this is awesome because you don't need to top coat it because after about an hour of dry time and then the longer it uh, stays on there, it'll cure on there and it doesn't need to have a top coat because it is wax, so it basically acts as its own top coat. So I'll just take an artist brush dip it into the wax and then apply it onto my hardware like so. It's kind of like the, like you're painting it on there. Um, it kind of looks like paint, but it is much more of a waxy substance and a lot thicker. Okay, that is going to sort of just sit on there for a while until I come back and buff it out. But in the meantime, now I am ready to do the stain on both the drawers and the legs. Okay, I'm gonna be using the water-based stain from Dixie Belle. It is called Voodoo Gel Stain, and it's the color Tobacco Road, which is gonna be a little bit of a darker brown. So what I like to do is wet my surface since this is water-based. Um, it'll just really apply a lot more evenly when you've got that wet surface already. So I'm going to mist this with some water here and let it get some, get soaked. And then I've also got a little applicator pad here and this is going to help me apply it evenly as well. Sometimes I also like to get this wet a tad bit then I'll go ahead and you can either put this onto the drawer or onto your applicator pad it's really a personal preference okay I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys over and untape the legs. Look at that smooth finish. I love it. Done with the stain. It looks incredible if I do say so myself. So the last couple of steps are just reassembling the dressers. Um, I am gonna let these just kind of sit a little bit longer before I buff them out. Um, so I'm just gonna move everything inside and we'll put the hardware on. Hardware time.
like so crazy because I feel like it's one of the first pieces that we actually did for ourselves. I think I did one other piece one other time, but other than that, this is like the first piece that we're actually keeping and gonna be utilizing on a day-to-day -day basis. I love how it turned out. Neiman loves how it turned out. So let's go get it upstairs in our bedroom. Now that we've got the big guy up here in the room and it was just a lot easier to take the drawers out to move it up here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter, which is the scent Orange Grove, which is such a lovely scent that is just gonna freshen up the drawer slides in here. Not only is it gonna help just make the, dr the dresser smell good, but also it'll help it slide, the drawers slide in and out really, really smoothly. We're basically just buttering them up, making them glide really easy. And I do that by just taking a lint-free cloth or you can take a natural bristle brush as well. And then I'll just grab a little bit on here and then I will just go through and butter them up. Get it all on the sides and the tops here. Wherever the drawer is going to touch is what is a great place to put the butter. And also can put it on this side since that's where the sides are going to rub. And I'm just gonna do that on all of the layers and then we'll do it on the bottom of the drawers and slide them right in. Also gonna butter up the nightstands. I'm so excited because we haven't had nightstands for like three weeks. I'm putting stuff on the floor, knocking stuff over, kicking stuff over. So it's finally gonna have a home. We can have lights by our bedside. I am so ready and so excited and these turned out amazing. Let's put these babies in their spots. Mm, perfect fit, you guys. Woo. And then got some lamps. We already had these lamps, so. That was a, another thing that we didn't have to buy. I think I'll probably, I don't know, I'll kind of play around with it. And then of course, I've got a lot of other things to add to the room. You know, we've got to put art up and stuff like that, but this was priority number one. <laughs> this is the color that I was trying to match and like, I don't know how much better I could have gotten. Like this darker green color. Like that's spot on. <laughs> that is spot on. So this is Cactus um, by Dixie Bell's Silk Paint Line. And I think that it just goes very perfectly in our space. I love the green. I know a lot of you guys aren't green fans, but Green works well in our space, and we like green. <sighs> I am giddy. I, I, it's just, it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm so happy with myself for not letting these pieces go because that is my true passion at heart. I love flipping things and then, you know, giving other people the opportunity to get unique things in their home. Um, but sometimes you just gotta take it for yourself and I'm not one to do that but this set really belongs here. So I hope this was just really a way to also show you guys that you don't have to buy brand new even for yourselves. We found this set on Facebook Marketplace for $450 is what we ended up paying all in and then using the paints and the stains probably i mean it cost me under 50 dollars for all of the materials so we're in around 500 dollars for 
three very, very solid, nice pieces of furniture where you could go to a big box store or online and pay triple the price for very bad quality furniture. Um, so I'm just so pleased with it, but just get out there and find some stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Go thrifting, um, make over your furniture, or if you're not into making it over, maybe you find something on Marketplace and you have someone in your area make it over um, for you. We just wanna thank you guys so much for watching and definitely get subscribed down below to Dixie Bell's channel, but also be sure to head over to our channel, which is Furniture Flipping Teacher. We would love for you to subscribe over there. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs>